Next year is the centenary of the outbreak of the First World War. The First World War is an event which has now passed very firmly from family reminiscence and folk knowledge to the realm of history. We think we know what happened in the First World War. My book is an attempt to explain what it was really like, because most of the time we don't think about the First World War, we feel it. Children are taught in schools about First World War poets like Wilfred Owen. Some adults read First World War fiction. But the actual experience of war affected everybody in Britain, not just the young men who were in the trenches of Flanders or at Gallipoli or wherever, but their wives, their mothers, their children at home. This was the first war that involved the whole population of this country. Vast, vast numbers of people. And it changed absolutely everything. Before I started investigating what life was really like in the First World War, the whole extent of my connection with it was this, which is a cigar box, which we found among my mother's effects when she died a few years ago. Inside it contains just about all the relics of her great uncle, who was actually killed before she was even born. Great Uncle Charlie, he was known as. Right, so there's, uh, there's three medal ribbons that were basically issued to all soldiers who'd fought in the first couple of years of the war. This here, which is a, a dead man's penny, which was sent to the families of all men killed in the First World War. Various documents, um, a letter from Kitchener, a letter from the king expressing his great sorrow. And then down here, the letter that no family ever wanted to receive. It's a form. Uh, his uh, mother was a widow. Madam, it's my painful duty to inform you that a report has this day been received from the War Office notifying the death of number 45737 Private Dixon, CE of the Royal Army Medical Corps, which occurred at number 34 Field Ambulance on the 7th of August 1915. And then at the bottom it's signed by some functionary, the officer in charge of records. Now, August the 7th, 1915, means that he died on the very first day of being in combat. He was one of the more than a million men who signed up in response to Kitchener's famous appeal, you recall, your country needs you. So these are particular stories, but really the collective effort is something that is the overwhelming impression of the vast numbers of people with indistinct stories who perished in a cataclysm we think we understand, but we don't really understand. The book will explain what the war was like for ordinary people, how it affected the warp and weft of everyday life, and it did affect every area of life. And it made us who we are today. It completely changed the relationship between the classes. It completely changed politics in this country. It changed the relationship between the sexes. Women, for example, were for the first time really able to go and do men's jobs. At the end of the war, they tried to put them back in the kitchen, but they didn't succeed. It changed absolutely everything about Britain, and it made us the people we are today. Now, a hundred years on, it's very, very hard for us to understand that, to recognize it, because we just think that we know about the First World War. We think we understand about boneheaded generals and courageous Tommies advancing into the teeth of machine gun fire. We think we understand all that stuff. We don't really. And this book is going to explain what it was really like.